So we're here today to do a comparison of the uh, encoder versus a conventional video capture device. So we've got the camera set up there out on the field. And then we've got um, the two devices here set up with um, the Mac version of NAC Sport. Obviously, uh, both of these devices are compatible with the PC versions. So we've got uh, cross-platform compatibility. So really, the, the video is about the differences and benefits between. So we're in the conventional, uh, using an Ava Media uh, patch device here. And as you can see, we're connected to our camera via the uh, HDMI cable and the feed's coming through nice and clear. So we're ready to do that capture. So this device itself does a, um, a really good job of taking the camera feed and allowing us to capture a single feed with no power source required. So the USB uh, connection here is powering the, the device, which is a, a big benefit when power is not available. Um, and it's the more simple process. The device takes the raw footage and it um, converts it into a stream that's being delivered through that USB for our software to capture. There's no real control within the device of what the stream is going to be uh, delivered and the software companies obviously need to keep on top of the OS update systems to make sure that their capture module within their versions of software is compatible to that device. So there are some considerations. Then the capture module has to do that work to convert the uh, fixed resolution that these devices are doing. So it's a, an important part of um, keeping up with um, support services to make sure you've got the latest version that keeps compatible into that but as you can see it's doing a single job as for a sharing point um it's one feed uh, and one camera if you had a splitter you could probably have a second laptop with another version of this um, device to capture a second uh, view of that same angle um, so you're having to um, double up things. There is an output and an input on here, so you can daisy chain them together or use a splitter to get the second feed. So there's some restrictions as in it's a single feed, one relationship to a laptop. If we come across to the uh, encoder, um, this is different. So I've entered the camera into the device. We've powered the device up and um, this encoder is taking the raw footage. It's managing that footage into a customizable resolution that I've set within this device. So we can manage the device to produce the resolutions 1080, 720 bit rate. And that's taking uh, a bit of pressure off the um, capture modules of whatever software you may be using. It's not using um, the device uh, firmware now, it's actually interacting with an RTSP protocol. And later on in the videos, we'll show you the benefits of RTSP and how it can mix with other sources and how it can uh, be sent longer distances. So still a single feed, but with RTSP, as opposed to the device which has got its own software and compatibility to um, um, to the laptop. One of the benefits of this one was that it was um, power from the USB but obviously we need power to uh, power this device and not oh, that's not always available in, in environments that we're up on a, a gantry so, but it does need a power but we can solve those situations. There's uh, a goal zero uh, shoot for battery that will adequately run the device so it can be in the middle of nowhere with no power and the, this uh, battery system or others like this will run that device uh, uh, quite easily. So here's our next setup in the uh, comparisons between uh, an encoder and um, a capture device. 
as we said before, the capture device is a relationship of one-to-one -one with the laptop and the camera. Though we've got the loop outs, as we previously mentioned, it's much more complex to uh, get multiple machines capturing the same source. So we come over to the RTSP, and this is made really simple. Again, we've got it powered up. We are now taking the feed from the um, encoder, and we're putting it into this share point. And that's a gigabit switch, and we're creating a static network. So the uh, encoder, the two laptops, are all in an addressing protocol that's a static address that we, we're familiar with, so we know the address. And it's being serviced by this gigabit switch. So as you can see, we've got video coming through on this laptop and video on this laptop. Again, this is the Mac version of NatSport. Obviously, we can mix and match PC and Mac. Same same capture modules um, that handle this um, this encoder. Again, to impress on you, the encoder is managing the raw footage. And again, we have settings that we can decide what resolution and bit rate that we want. But now this becomes a really good share point using RTSP as our protocol uh, ready for integration to wider services. Our focus has been on the AP mini feed, uh, which is the new addition to our uh, system. But remember that we've also, for the high professional levels, we've got the multi feed. So if you wanted, um, whether you're in a, a stadium and it's uh, SDI, or you want to go directly into the encoder, which is HDMI, cameras, four feeds. This produces four RTSP separate feeds for you to capture in your devices. So this is the, the daddy version of um, the mini feed. So we'll go into the next stage of the advantages of um, the RTSP internet protocol. So again, just to remind you, we've got our static network being serviced by a, a gigabit switch. We've got our single um, capture encoder delivering directly from our camera. And also we've connected another cable to our SharePoint here, which is connected to our IP camera. So as we move the IP camera, you will see that um, we've got um, the dual capture now. So we've got the conventional uh, camera over here um, through a, a very wet window. And we've got the IP camera set up. So there's a dual capture in the uh, Napsport Mac version. Um, it goes up to four captures. As you can see on the Mac here, I'm looking at the single view I can click between views that I want to look at and code from or again go to the mosaic. So this is giving us the second laptop or coach's laptop um, with the views that we want, primary capture, dual uh, capture so that we get two end files that are in the right resolution that we want. So quickly, just to recap, we've got the RTSP. We know that that needs to be powered. We know that our SharePoint needs to be powered. As mentioned before, we've got a device like this that will easily cover charging the, uh, the encoder. And then a wider solution for multiple things to be charged for the duration of a game would be something that we recommend the Jackery systems. These are very good um, power units. I could charge that um, charging bl uh, plug block there quite easily and, and run for the duration of the game. So both the AP Mini and the Multi-Feed can be configured to work in a static address as we've been demonstrating with the SharePoint here. However, they can be configured to work in a infrastructure and network infrastructure. So the stadium or the environment that you've got, if they've got a, a, a network that uses different addressing, we can configure the boxes to have reserved addresses and they'll become available then so that the computers can 
plug in to anywhere in the stadium and pick up the um, RTSP feed for their capture. This is where the, there's a real advantage in uh, RTSP because the wider infrastructures of stadiums can deliver the feed whenever you sat at um, uh, a plug-in point.